24th president of Marquette University, Dr. Michael Lovell. Uh, oh, well, thank you, Scott. And I, I'm going to welcome all of you to the, the Al McGuire Center. I was actually just saying to Bill, I think this is the most people we've had in here in more than a year. And it's uh, so exciting that we will be introducing um, our new head basketball coach, uh, Shaka Smart, uh, to our community. And I know you're all eager to hear from Shaka, uh, but I first, I'd like to thank Director of Athletics, Bill Scholl, and Deputy Director of Athletics, Mike Broker, for their leadership in bringing Shaka to Marquette as our new coach. You know, I learned from my first days at Marquette just how important basketball is to our students, alumni, faculty and staff, and fans around the globe. So it's been no secret how passionate Marquette Nation is about basketball and how all eyes were on this coaching decision. Now I've had the great pleasure uh, to meet with Shaka over the past few days. And what I've learned is he is a man of tremendous character and is someone who cares deeply about personal relationships. As you get to know him, know him I know you will agree that he is an excellent fit for our basketball program and even a better fit for our university. As a coach, Shaka has a proven track record of success on the court. He's hardworking, he's innovative, and he's already been to the Final Four. I know he will be successful on the court at Marquette. I also know that he will be a leader off the court and he will make our campus and our community better. Basketball is a big deal at Marquette, but so is our Catholic and Jesuit mission. I can promise you that Shaka and his wife Maya will live out our mission, vision, and values every single day. I couldn't be more pleased to have the Smart family as part of the Marquette community. To Shaka, Maya, and Zar, welcome to the Marquette family. I have no doubt you will help us usher a new, exciting era for our men's basketball program. With that, I'd like to turn things over to Bill Scholl, Vice President and Director of Athletics, who will say a few words. Go Marquette. Thank you, President Lovell, and it is great to see some people back in, back in the building. It's been so long. What an exciting day, and I am so thrilled to be a part of this historic day around this historic program. Like President Lovell, I'll be brief. You didn't come here to listen to us. I think the man you want to listen to is sitting a few feet away, so I, I will go quickly. I do want to go a little bit deeper into the thank yous. You know, when you run a search, first of all, first of all, everybody thinks these are fun, and this is what athletic directors live for, and I got to tell you, they're not fun, uh, and they're incredibly stressful, and you get through them because you have an incredible support group with you, uh, kind of riding the wave. And, and alignment around our basketball program here at Marquette is unbelievable, and it starts at the top with our board chair uh, and our board of trustees. Some of, I won't name names, but some of them are, are certainly here in the building with us tonight, and they, they helped us see this through. Uh, and then certainly within uh, our, our, from a staff standpoint, Dr. Lovell was just a rock as we went through this entire process. Uh, Joel Pogodzinski, our executive vice president, uh, Paul Jones, our vice president and general counsel, uh, were hugely helpful as we went through this process. And then I think you all know Mike Broker. Uh, my, Mike is just a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, Marquette man and his help throughout this process. Mike, we couldn't have gotten it done without you. So thank you. I've had the great pleasure over the last few days to get to know Shaka and Maya a little bit better. And, and I gotta tell you, particularly as it relates to Shaka, not to leave you out, Maya, uh, but you can't possibly understate, uh, I'm sorry, you can't possibly overstate uh, what a great fit he is for this storied program. Not only is he an outstanding basketball coach, he's a man of great principle. And that is critical to Marquette, and it's critical to Marquette basketball. Shaka will bring a style of play to Fiserv and the Al McGuire court that fans will love to watch. I think I speak for everyone except perhaps Shaka when I say I wish the season started tomorrow. 
I'm guessing you may want a little more time. Shaka, welcome to Marquette. I know coming home to Wisconsin is a bit of a homecoming for you, but I really think you, Maya, and Zora are going to love your new home at Marquette and here in the great city of Milwaukee. I played with this next line a while trying to avoid the obvious pun, but I'm going to say it because it's so true. He is smart, he is thoughtful, he is principled, and he can coach. To our incredible fan base, I would simply say this, get ready for some hoops. This is going to be a thrilling new era of Marquette basketball. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear it from the man. Shaka Smart, welcome to Marquette, and step on up and say a few words. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shaka Smart to Marquette. Oh, and we have a little gift. Shock is the 18th coach in our history. Did you wear 18 now? Oh, wore 18 now. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to say I'm so excited to be a part of the Marquette Nation. First of all, I want to say thank you to President Lovell, uh, to Bill Scholl. Uh, they were instrumental throughout this whole process, really in educating Maya and me about the vision that they have for Marquette basketball and for the entire university. And one of the things that was just so incredibly attractive to us about coming to Marquette is that that, shared, that vision is shared by us. It's a very, very common shared vision that we believe in. And it starts with family. So I want to introduce my wife, Maya. Stand up, Maya. Uh, we have one uh, daughter, Zora, who you guys will see running around here soon. Uh, she's in, she prioritized school and soccer, uh, but she'll be up here soon enough. Uh, Maya's mother, Margaret, is also a part of our family. And then my mom, Monica, lives about an hour away from here. And uh, I'm so excited. Uh, she's so excited uh, about, this, about this move. Um, Again, truly excited to be a part of the Marquette Nation. Uh, growing up in, in this part of the country, uh, you couldn't help but follow this basketball program. I was born in 1977. And one of the things I remember about a kid growing up watching basketball was I remember listening to Al McGuire as a broadcaster and <laughs> getting to know his personality through listening to him do games. Uh, as I got more and more into the sport, into coaching, I learned about what he did here, what the coaches that followed him did here, and truly understanding how special of a basketball program this is. One thing I want to make very clear is a huge part of the reason that Maya and I are here is the success that has been built by past coaches and past players. And I want all those former players, former coaches to know that I take the responsibility very, very seriously of being your basketball coach. So I want to say thank you to everyone that's reached out, that's been so welcoming, to our family. We just got in yesterday. Uh, but we already feel very, very welcome and can't wait to get to work. I want to tell you a little bit about my vision, my philosophy, uh, because I, I think it really, really aligns with what's made this program great over the years. My number one core value is relationships. I was raised by a single mom, and 
really my coaches in sports were the ones that filled the void of a father figure for me. I used to look at those guys like they were 10 feet tall. And I have to mention my high school coach, Kevin Bavery. He coaches right now at Middleton High School, right outside of Madison. I played for him at Oregon High School. And he's really the one that helped me fall in love with basketball. He used to open a gym for me on Friday and Saturday nights uh, when I was really the only one thinking about basketball. <laughs> and he taught me about coaching even while I was still playing. We used to you know, talk about diagramming plays and, and different defenses and offenses. So um, he was one of many, many coaches who spent the time to build a great relationship with me. And again, that's why I'm standing here today is because I truly believe in the power of relationships and it's, it's a big reason why I coach. But the relationships don't stop with the coaches and the players. It's the players amongst each other that's probably the most important relationship in any basketball program is the way that the guys feel about each other. Uh, as you know, the best teams have a few things in common, and one of those things that they have in common is that they're truly connected around something common, a common goal. They want to do something special. And whether you're talking about 1977 or 2003, or all the, any of the other great Marquette teams over the years, you talk to those players, if you talk to those coaches, they'll say, man, we had a connected group. That starts with relationships. My second core value is growth. Growth is incredibly important to me because we get the chance to be around these young men at an extremely formative time in their lives. 17, 18 years old, until 22, 23 years old. For some of them, a shorter time span than that. And that's a time when really you go from being a young man to being a grown man. Not just out here on the basketball court, but in life. So I take very, very seriously the opportunity to play a role in helping these guys grow and become, as we say, the best version of themselves. It doesn't just happen on its own. No coach has magic pixie dust that he can sprinkle on a guy. It happens through relationships. It happens through very, very hard work. It happens through resiliency. But that emphasis on growth is something that our players will feel every single day. You know, we say get 1% better. Just get 1% better each day. And you're going to be a lot better by the end of the month, by the end of the season, by the end of the next year. And now our third core value is victory. This is a competitive sport. Uh, this, is, this is a very, very high level of basketball. We step on the floor to win. Uh, but in order to win large victories, you first have to win small victories. Things like being on time. Things like being the first guy ready. Uh, all the things that go into preparation to succeed. Every team wants to win. Every player wants to win. Every coach but it's really the teams that honor what goes into winning and work at those things every single day that are going to be highly successful. To me, what goes into win winning is, again, being connected around a common goal, having the willingness to lose yourself in the present. We live in such a world that can pull you into the past or the future. My goal is to get these guys to be so locked in on the present moment when they get to step out there on the floor because it is a very precious time. To win, you have to outcompete the opponent. And then lastly, you have to take a win anyway mentality because as we know in basketball, there's always twists and turns in the games. We may not agree with some of the calls that the officials make and you have to be willing to respond. We tell our guys all the time, response is the ability to focus on the next most important thing. We truly want to build leaders in our basketball program. Leadership to me is not something that's determined by a title. It's not something determined by your, your rank or your class on the team. Leadership is simply the ability to make people and situations better. So if our guys can come out here on the court and they can make the people around them better, if they can make the practice better, if they can make our games better, then they're leaders. If they don't, then they're not. The best teams are filled with leaders, 
not just a captain or two. So our job as coaches is to cultivate that leadership and understanding that this is a very, very high level of basketball and our goals are very, very high. I think in order to prepare for a challenge, you have to challenge yourself during that preparation. So it's going to be hard. We're going to need to work extremely hard. We're going to need to set the bar at a very high level before we even get to the games. And part of our job this offseason is to get our guys to fully understand that by the time that ball goes up for official practice. I'm excited about that. Really, really excited about meeting our guys. I haven't gotten a chance to meet them yet in person. Um, but they're the ones that make this program go. And I can't wait to be around them. Uh, from the players, there's a few things that we expect. Um, number one, we're going to train with an incredible level of enthusiasm. We step out to practice, we get to practice. We don't have to practice, we get to practice. Huge difference. Number two, we're going to give each other energy. We've all been around energy givers. We've all been around energy takers. We want to build a basketball program full of energy givers. Through that, things are fun. It's fun to be around energy givers. And it creates winning. It creates success. And then lastly, we're going to compete. Everything we do in our workouts and our practices, we will have a score. And I don't think anyone will win every single competition, but there's going to be a barometer on where we are as a program and where each member of our program is. There's nothing wrong with that. That's an opportunity to grow and succeed and use that barometer to get better. Can't wait to be our, around our guys and build relationships with them. Um, I've learned very, very quickly that this is a very, very special family-oriented place and program that's going to be extremely attractive to future players. And, you know, I, I'm already sharing that, that fact with a lot of guys. So uh, to all of our current players, uh, to all of our future players, I can promise you this. You will not find a coach who has more passion and enthusiasm for pouring into you as a person and helping you become the best you can be. And through that, we're going to have a lot of fun together. Again, I want to say thank you to everyone for coming today. Thank you for everyone watching. Uh, this is only the beginning. Can't wait to get on a plane and go see some of our guys that are home for a little while and connect with them. And I can't wait to meet so many of you that I haven't met. I do want to acknowledge again uh, about as impressive a collection of former players here at Marquette as there is in any program. And, you know, it doesn't even do justice to name a few because there's so many. I do want to say thank you to Doc Rivers uh, because he's been a mentor for me over the years. Got to know him through recruiting his son, Austin. And obviously, what a guy of class. What an unbelievable representative of this program. Uh, can't wait to meet all the alums, all the people that made this program what it is, and can't wait to, to make them proud. Thank you guys, and I was taught this today, so we're going to try it out. We are. Hey, Shaka, Ben Steele from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Welcome to Milwaukee. Uh, it seemed like the deal kind of came together quickly last week. Can you talk about, were you intrigued right off the bat with the possibility of Marquette? And, you know, what did you like about the job and what ultimately clinched the decision for you? Absolutely. Um, a close friend of mine, former co-worker, uh, used to be here during the, the Tom Crean era. So for someone that hasn't worked here, I do know a lot about the program just through him. Uh, Denny Kuyper, uh, some folks in, in, in the, the building will, will know him. Uh, so over the years, he's, he's just shared 
phenomenal stories with me about, about the program, about some of the folks that still work here uh, in administration and, and inside the basketball program. Um, when the opportunity came about, or the potential opportunity, there was really three reasons for me and Maya that you know, we felt like this was a, an absolute slam dunk. Uh, number one, this is a basketball crazy place. This is a basketball-centric athletic department. Um, I'm excited to learn about the success that all the other sports teams are having here, and I'm excited about meeting those coaches. And at the same time, I love the fact that basketball is in the center of it all. Uh, number two, it's clear that Marquette is about family, and that goes beyond sports. And that's something that resonates with us. And when we talk about family, that doesn't stop when the boundaries of campus stops. We're in the city of Milwaukee. And uh, Maya and I have always had a passion for just being part of positive change, being part of improving the community. And we can't wait to roll up our sleeves and you know, partner with all the folks that are already doing great work here. And then number three, the alignment uh, from Dr. Lovell uh, to Bill to Mike Broker. Uh, there's a common vision, and again, it's, it's a shared vision that I have, and, and those things were all extremely attractive. Again, I, I grew up about an hour from here. I was born in Madison, uh, spent my whole childhood in Wisconsin, and it's phenomenal being back. But the reason I came back was Marquette. That's why I'm here. Steve McGarvey, Associated Press. I was just wondering, did you feel, was it just Marquette that made you interested in going somewhere, or did you feel you kind of needed a fresh start somewhere else after this past season? Well, for me, I felt like those three factors were a better fit for our family uh, than Texas. We had six great, great years at Texas. I mean, the relationships we were able to build, some of the unbelievable memories. Uh, you know, our team won the Big 12, first Big 12 tournament championship ever in program history. So um, I will never forget those six years, the six years before that at VCU. Uh, you know, one of the things when you're in coaching is you learn when you're at a place that more than anything, it's about the people. And so when you move from one place to the next, uh, that's really what you miss. You miss, the, you miss the people. But I'm so excited about being part of this community and, and this program. You know, after any coaching change, people are wondering about what the roster is going to look like next season. Marquette's got a lot of talent, you know, Dawson and DJ and, and Justin. I know you met with them virtually, but do you get a sense of any of those guys returning or, or what the roster is going to look like? And, also, the, the recruits that are committed for next season. Those guys have been great, you know, in communication. I'm actually going to go see them this week, the guys that are not on campus. Uh, the, the, the few that are, I look forward to meeting them, hopefully tonight. Um, you know, they, this is a, a, a really an unprecedented era in college basketball for a variety of factors, uh, obviously COVID being, being one of them. Uh, but the guys have been terrific. I mean, I think they're really excited about uh, the possibilities moving forward of what we can do together. Uh, they're all to a man, uh, young men that want to, to win and want to be successful, uh, want to be part of something special. And they, they also love Marquette. So I'm looking forward to spending time with them, getting to know those guys. You know, I went through a coaching change myself when I was in college, and it's hard. You know, it's something that it, it, it does, uh, you know, kind of rock you a little bit. My college coach called me and told me, you know, he was, he was leaving and I cried. I mean, I told you the way I looked at coaches. So when you, when you go through a change, it's challenging. And it's our job as coaches to build relationships such that there can be a level of trust. But that doesn't necessarily happen overnight. It takes time and just excited about spending, with, spending time with those guys to do that. Hi, Shaka. Dan Needles from WISN-TV here in Milwaukee. A, a two-parter. Uh, number one, obviously, you had recruited a player from Brookfield Central down to Texas, so you know the basketball 
in Wisconsin, the talent and how it's gotten better over the years, probably a lot better since when you played. How important is it trying to keep some of the local talent here for you? And number two, we thought you were coming here seven years ago. What, what's different? It's all about timing, obviously. Was it just a better feel this time around with Marquette? Yeah, I think a few things are different. One, um, it's a different time for our family. Um, number two, uh, at that time, and obviously something was reported that wasn't true, uh, you know, we had a group of guys that, you know, quite frankly, I wasn't ready to leave. Uh, you know, I, again, any coaching change, because I went through one myself, is something that I, I have a lot of sensitivity to. Um, in terms of local talent, you know, one of the great things about Marquette is there's been Marquette teams that have been, you know, filled with local talent that have, have had a lot of success, and there's been Marquette teams that have, have been led by guys from further away. Uh, there's been great players here from really close by, and there's been, you know, great players at Marquette from, from the East Coast or, or different parts of the country. We want to recruit guys that fit our vision. We want to recruit guys that, that value relationships, growth, and victory. One of the best ways to build the culture that you want to have is to bring people into your program that have a similar view of how to play basketball, how to train, and how to conduct themselves off the court. So absolutely, it's important to us to do a great job recruiting in the local area. Uh, it's important to us to do a great job developing relationships with the high school coaches and grassroots coaches in this area. And you're right, the talent has gotten better uh, since 1995 when I graduated from high school. Uh, and, and so we're, we're definitely looking forward to building relationships with, with young men and their families that, that are from this area. Steve McGargy again. I think everybody remembers your Havoc style there in VCU when you got to the Final Four. Yeah. How have you kind of adjusted your strategy since then, and what kind of style of play are you thinking will fit best here? Well, I think the biggest thing with style of play is it's always got to fit the guys on your team. And then as you go through the recruiting process, you try to recruit towards that. But it's, it's interesting because you're always going to have some returning players and then some incoming players. Um, you know, getting to know this group of guys that are, are here at Marquette currently, I, I do think it's a group that, that can play with a level of speed and pace. Um, you know, offensively, I think that's the most important thing to me, speed up the floor and then pace in the half court the ball moving so that it gets ahead of the defense in order to create closeouts. And then really good basketball players are great when their defender has to run and close out to them from the paint. Uh, from those, you know, in those situations now, you know, you want guys that are really good shooters to shoot threes, and you want guys that, that can get in the paint and, and draw fouls and get to the foul line. Uh, defensively, uh, it, I love, I've always loved playing an aggressive brand of defense. Uh, being disruptive to the other team, taking them out of what we do. At VCU, we called it havoc. But really, that was more a mentality than any particular full court press or way of defending. It was a mindset that, hey, we're going to take you out of what you're trying to do. And that's exactly how we want to play here. Uh, the game's evolved some, you know, in the last 10, 15 years. I think it's officiated a little bit differently. I think depending on the league you play in, you're dealing with certainly different levels of guards. Uh, different levels of guys that can attack certain defenses. But to me, it's about being disruptive. It's about getting your hands on the basketball. We always want to force 32 or more deflections. That's, that's, that's a big stat for us. And then the best defensive teams, I don't care if you're even playing zone, man, pressing, whatever you're doing, have one thing in common, and that's that they play with multiple efforts. They go, they go to block a shot, but then they go to get the rebound. They go to help their teammate, and then they go to recover to their man. They slide their feet, and then they, they recover to go to contest a shot. So multiple efforts is going to be a huge part of our, our defensive style. Hi, Lori Nickel with the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Quick two questions. You mentioned your high school coach. Did anybody else from growing up here have a great influence on you? Maybe not just basketball, but also the core values that you mentioned? And secondly, can you elaborate a little bit more 
on Doc Rivers, how far you guys go back or, or how you two know each other, what you've talked about? Thank you. Well, in terms of influence on me, my mom, biggest influence, her name's Monica King. Um, I won't tell you where she went to college, but, uh, you know, she, my mom, I have uh, three brothers, and, you know, f for the most part, she raised us as a single mom. And she did the best she could. I mean, she worked a lot, it was very tiring. Uh, I remember when I was a young kid, she would come home from her day job and she'd be home for an hour or two and then she would uh, teach a Lamaze class at night. And I'm like five, six years old and I would always cry and whine because I didn't want her to leave at night. And you know, when you're that age, you're not really thinking about how your mom feels about how you're acting. But she taught me so much really without beating me over the head with it. It was more through example, through conversation. Uh, my mom and I have always had a really close relationship where we just talk. And so <laughs> when uh, I told her I was coming here, I, I, words can't express the, how overjoyed uh, she is. But she was the biggest influence on me. Uh, her brother, my uncle, uh, also a, a huge influence. And then my grandfather, who's, who's passed away, lived in Chicago my whole life. So I drove through Milwaukee. Every, we drove through Milwaukee every time we would go visit him. Uh, sometimes he would meet us up here halfway. And, um, you know, I, I hope he, he can see us here today because, you know, he was a big influence on me as well. Uh, Doc Rivers, I got to know in, let's see, 2008 or so, uh, his son Austin, um, his, his three sons, his middle son Austin, a phenomenal basketball player, NBA basketball player, as everybody knows, um, was a young star player in Orlando, Florida. I had come to the University of Florida as an assistant coach to work for Billy Donovan, and uh, Austin was committed to come to Florida. He, it, he ended up changing his mind and going to Duke. Uh, I was at Florida for just one year before I went to VCU, but during that time I got to know Doc Rivers and he was so kind to me uh, and it was great to just be able to kind of stay in touch with him over the years. I try not to bug him too much, but if you think about it, uh, you know, he's about as accomplished as any basketball coach in our game at any level. And he also does it with a level of class that uh, is, is you know, out of this world. And then he also takes an interest in younger coaches. And you know, he's influenced me a lot more than he probably knows, just from the kind words that he's had um, and you know, the, the way that he's conducted himself. So um, I'm really, really glad to be at his university and uh, part of his program. And the same goes for you know, all the greats, all the former players uh, that have made this program what it is. Good afternoon, Shaka. Tim Van Born, Fox here in town. Uh, you referenced the basketball-centric uh, nature of this program. Uh, how important is it to engage with that passionate fan base, and what does a, a fan base like that do for a program? I think it's really important to engage with the fan base. I, I think communication uh, is so incredibly important and as we know over the past couple decades communication has changed in so many ways uh, but it, it's it's critical to share your vision to share your message uh, it's interesting because in coaching there's certain things that occur within your program that you want to stay within your program but then there's a, there's a lot of other things that you want to share and especially you want to share with fans that are, that are so passionate about what you do. Uh, and I think the most important thing to share with the fans is who these young men are as people so that they can connect with them on, on a human level. And when they go watch, you know, DJ Carton, you know, break down his defender from the top of the key and fly down the paint, not only do they see what he's doing physically and athletically, but they understand who he is as a person. And I know from coaching for 22 years, 
the players really value that too. To me, the best programs separate themselves from other programs in that there's a very, very distinct, special relationship between the players and the fans. And part of my job as a coach is to help cultivate that. Uh, it's, it's part of my job, again, to share our vision and to communicate. Um, but I, I'm really excited about that. And how important is it to success? It's hugely important. I mean, I can't wait for that first game. I, I keep asking Mike Broker, who are we playing? Um, I do agree with Bill, though. Give us a little time. We don't want it to be tomorrow just yet. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a phenomenal opportunity for, for us to be part of just a basketball program that's so beloved and supported by the, the, the folks around it. And it's huge, makes a huge difference. I mean, everybody knows this season was unlike any other because of you know, the restrictions that occurred with COVID. And I do think that affected uh, you know, teams' home court atmospheres, particularly when teams are used to you know, having a raucous environment. So, you know, excited about hopefully us continuing to move forward from a health standpoint so that we can get back uh, to packing the Fiserv Forum. And again, when you have that synergy between the fans and the team, I can't really put it into a quantity, a number of points that it's worth, but it's certainly worth a significant amount. As you look to, to fill out your coaching staff, you know, hiring ex-head coaches was in vogue for a while, or offensive, defensive coordinators, or analytics people. What, what are you going to be looking for? Well, first and foremost, on the coaching staff, we're looking for people that are going to be in complete alignment with our vision. So I talked earlier about relationships, growth, victory. We have a variety of principles underneath each of those core values. We only want to add someone to the coaching staff if they align in those areas. Uh, our job, number one thing we can do as coaches, uh, because these guys are recruited already because they're talented young men. Certainly, there's areas of the game where they need to improve, they need to get stronger, uh, they need to grow, they need to uh, continue to get better as students. But they're already really talented guys. So the most important thing, the best thing we can do for them is help them play with a clear mind, a clarity, a confidence to go attack and to go after winning. I mean, if you think about the best players here, um, you know, a guy that I've had the chance to get to know a little bit is a great example, Travis Diener. I was a young guy on the staff at University of Dayton when, he, when Travis was playing here. And what I saw is a guy with no fear, absolute confidence, and an absolute command over his game. He didn't try to be someone else, he was Travis. So that's just an example of a guy playing with an unbelievably clear mind. And if we can help our players go, if we can help Dawson Garcia go play that way, Justin Lewis, uh, those guys are gonna play well because they're really talented young men. Shaka, Dan Malloy, Spectrum News One here. We're a statewide news channel. Um, I just wonder if becoming the first black head coach in this program's history, there have only been 18 head coaches, uh, did that distinction come up at all in conversation before you got here? And what does that distinction mean to you, Maya, and your families? It did not come up in conversation uh, because, you know, we talked about having a shared vision. Uh, and I think, you know, it's interesting. There's been so much dialogue in our country about race uh, and, and other uh, factors that are related to race over the past several months. In a lot of ways, that dialogue's been really, really good. Uh, it, the interesting thing is when you're in sports, uh, when you're in basketball, uh, it's exciting that when you get out there on the court and the clock's running down and the scores tie and it's 10, 9, 8, people are only really thinking about one thing. Nobody's looking out there on the floor and, and thinking about some of the labels that we tend to place on people. Nobody's worrying about uh, what someone said or, or any of that, those sorts of things. It, all of us here in blue and gold, we're, we're trying to win <laughs> for Marquette. 
And so that's one of the cool things about sports. You truly can lose yourself and you can, you can let go of some of that other stuff that does tend to plague our, our world sometimes. Um, not that it goes away, but for a moment, you can just be lost in, in that special time. Uh, it, it is certainly significant, and I take a lot of uh, responsibility and, and uh, pride in, in being the first black head coach here, especially because this is Doc's school and because of what he's done. And I'm going to you know, be leaning heavily on him. Uh, you know, for me in coaching, one of the things that I really enjoy is, is mentoring. I used to be the really young coach. I'm st I think I'm still relatively young, but uh, you know, now having done this 22 years, I really enjoy mentoring young coaches, particularly young African-American coaches. Uh, because if I'm the 18th head basketball coach at Marquette, um, you know, hopefully down the road, there's another black coach. And not just at Marquette, but all around the country. And I think you see that if you look at, you know, some of the jobs that are being filled this spring. The best thing we can do for that is do a tremendous job with our players, helping them grow as people, and then being successful on the court. Ashaka Scott Grodsky with CBS Milwaukee. You mentioned the importance of competition and sort of keeping a score through all the practices. So yep. for you, I imagine there are some tangible goals as well. What does success look like to you in this program, both short term? Where do you want to be in a year? Where do you want to be in five years with the program? Yeah. Well, I think long term is probably the easiest one to answer. And that is, you know, long term, you, you want to you want to have seasons where you're able to put something up in the rafters, you know, whether it's a Big East regular season championship, Big East tournament championship, um, you know, the ultimate goal is to advance to the Final Four and beyond. Um, you know, that's been done once here in 1977, and that's something that uh, I think there's, there's programs that have won it, and there's programs that have never won it. There's some programs, there's some really good programs that haven't even been to the Final Four or haven't been to the Final Four in the past 30, 40 years. Um, I've learned it, it, you don't take for granted, uh, you know, having done it even once. Uh, so those are the long-term goals for sure. Uh, Short-term, honestly, there's a lot of goals that you go after before you even play a single game. Again, we're trying to build culture. And again, that's not a commentary on anything that happened before. I think any time a new coach comes in, you're going to have to build the culture that you believe in. And again, that starts with relationships, and it, and it takes time. It takes communication. Uh, it takes a lot of work. Uh, but the goals that we have will be short term, making sure that we're able to come together, uh, you know, have a, again, a, a common bond, I think by the time you get to the summer, you want to really know, hey, this is the group of guys that we have that are all in for Marquette. And again, this is an unprecedented time in college basketball for those of you that kind of follow it extremely closely in terms of rule changes and you know, extra years of eligibility and all those things. I think that certainly Im impacts a lot of programs around the country. Uh, but I'm excited about, again, uh, you know, getting a group of guys to truly be, be connected around what we're here to do and then to help those guys find meaning in why they're here. Because when you find meaning in something, then you can really go after it with everything you have. This is a high, high level. You know, for there's a few people in here that played at this level, but for, for the rest of us that did not play at this level, uh, I think it's important to have, you know, a respect for what these guys do on a daily basis. And some of them make it look really easy, but it's not. It, it, it takes uh, an extreme dedication and it takes the ability to process a lot of challenging things up here. All the while you're 18, 19, 20 years old trying to figure it out. So my goal short term is to help the guys in, in those areas. And I truly believe that success on the court follows that. You know, when we hit the practice court, on the first day of practice, if you, were able, if you were walking into our practice, I would want you to feel like, man, these guys are competing at a high level. There's a 
incredible, infectious energy in here. And, you know, guys are being coached to get better. This will be the final question. Hi, Coach. Zoe Comfort from the Marquette Wire. Um, I, going back to your coaching staff, obviously you want them to fit the philosophies and values that you're instilling in your guys. But I was just wondering about your thoughts about, you know, breaking that glass ceiling and maybe hiring a female assistant coach. It's a great question. Um, I've, I've actually uh, interviewed you know, females before for positions on the staff, and uh, I've gotten to know a few female assistant coaches in the NBA that know more basketball than pretty much any male coach. Uh, I think I know our game is certainly moving to the point where uh, I, I don't think it'll be long where you see a lot more female assistant coaches on the men's side in, in college basketball, and then you're obviously seeing more and more of them um, in the NBA. You know, I, I, I want to hire the best person. You know, it's really not about anything other than who's going to do the best job to help our program. And, you know, again, we owe that to our players and all the folks that, that do such a great job supporting this program. So, uh, you know, one of the things I've learned is you take your time, you get to know people. Um, you know, I, we had a very good coaching staff at, at, at the University of Texas. Uh, I'm very appreciative for, for, for the work that those guys have done. And again, you get to know people and, and you figure out what is best for these guys here in this moment. I want to say thank you to everyone. I uh, can't wait to meet everyone. Can't wait for the first game. Uh, if you want to find me, I'll be in. I'll be in there. I'll be in the office. Um, I, I'm super excited about this being our new home. And again, you know, I'm, 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 I'm getting the hang of this, but I like it. I'm going to end with this. We are. Thank you.